of people were confused as to whether we had class or not today. So um, some people emailed me, but I teach right before this asking if we do, and I couldn't get back to them until about five minutes before. So don't expect them to have made it. And, you know, there's been a lot going on on campus this week, so I'm happy to see you all here and safe. Um, really scary, the shooting that happened this week. Um, if you all are ever affected by something like that, know people that are hurt or are have to go through some something traumatic like that that I can't even imagine, just let me know. The mental health comes first. Um, yeah, and I'm just happy that everyone in here is safe and okay. Um, thank you all for being flexible about not having class on Wednesday. To top that off, I went, I gave my kid my phone to watch YouTube because I had to go get something for my car. And when I came back in, he was dumping it in the toilet and laughing because I usually have my toilets locked, but I left the lock up. I didn't realize it. So my phone is broken, um, and that just means I'm locked out of Canvas because it takes two-factor authentication. So if you message me on Canvas, I'm not ignoring you. I'm so sorry, and I'm also sorry for not grading you all. Yet, I've been locked out since Wednesday. I have a new phone coming between 5 and 7 today. They're supposed to come to my house and set it up. It was like all covered by insurance, but it took some time. Um, yeah. So I will get to grading. If you have friends that missed today, you can pass the message because I won't be able to link this video until tonight. I won't be able to post your homework until tonight. I won't be able to grade you until over the weekend. Um, and don't let it freak you out. Canvas, like, if sometimes it says you have like a zero until it's graded and it'll make your grade look really bad, but it's just because I haven't input a grade yet. So. Try not to worry. Um, I still haven't even put in the benchmarks because they were all coming in like Friday night, um, which makes sense. And I wasn't, I was out of town for the long weekend and yeah, a little delayed, but it's okay. Um, so class on Wednesday, we were just going to do like a group activity um, and kind of talk about pathos and ethos and constraints and rhetorical situation um, we're gonna look at a couple speeches we're just gonna kind of let that go um, because you all have to do peer review on Monday and Tuesday and that's what we're talking about today and in order to keep on track we're just gonna pass over that that lesson but maybe we'll come back to it in the future do you all have any questions starting out about everything what's going on okay so we'll summarize um, at the end make sure you all are on track um, cool so I want to talk about peer review today as um, a writing teacher these are some of the kind of insecurities I've seen in students and I've experienced myself as a student when giving peer review to classmates. So one, students place greater value on teacher feedback or provide input according to what the teacher would want. So when we do peer review, so I'll start by saying the peer, you guys are gonna do peer review Monday and Tuesday based on the discussion board benchmark. Um, that's obviously not like a paper, so it's gonna be a little different, but your next round of major assignments, you, I'm gonna pair you up with someone and you're gonna read their full paper and give them feedback. So keep all of this in mind for the future also. Um, and whatever is not relevant to this assignment, you know, just hold it for later. But I want to just remind you all how valuable um, your insight and opinions are. And the reason we we don't do peer review so that you guys can kind of tell each other what you think I would tell you. Um, we do it so that you all can receive feedback from a variety of perspectives, not just my own. Um, so.
So your peers' feedback is, my feedback is not more important than your peers. Um, I do have requirements for the assignment. A lot of those are based on what I have to do for this department, and you do have to follow those. Um, but every time that you all do peer review, you're gonna meet with me after, and you're going to talk to me about which peer review you found valuable, which peer review you didn't find valuable, and we're gonna talk through that together. I'm not really going to give you my feedback. Um, I'm going to try my hardest to hear from you, understand your goals, and help you move towards them, not shape all of you, make all of you write like things that mirror my opinions or like what I like, whatever. Um, second thing goes along with that, students see themselves as not good enough to tell someone how to write. Um, you all, all have valuable life experience and opinions that will help your classmates. Um, and if you, I just want you all to really like trust yourselves. Um, students don't want to be judgmental of classmates thoughts or feelings so if you read if you read something you disagree with with your classmate um, you might not want to tell them you think they're wrong um, there's a way to do that you know we want to like always do it with respect and we always want to back up why um, so if you disagree you know you do it respectfully, bring in your reasoning. Um, that's encouraged, it helps us think. And then students only comment on easy fixes such as grammar and spelling. We're not here to line edit each other's pieces. We're here to think bigger picture, um, more conceptually, um, give that kind of feedback. So, all of these things, I want you to be aware of these constraints. I want you to know it's okay if you feel this way, but I also want you to push past it, trust yourself, try really hard to give um, good, thoughtful feedback. Any questions so far? Great. Let me... So I'll post this to Canvas um, when I can. It won't be until like later tonight. But this is what your assignment is going to be. So all of you will post your benchmark by 10 a.m. on Monday. You'll complete peer review by midnight on Tuesday. So you only have two days to do this. But if you dedicate the one hour that you should, be, you don't have class next week at all. So if you dedicate the one hour you should be here on Monday, you should be able to get this done. That's my thinking. You don't have to do it in that time slot, um, but it is such a quick turnaround. That's why we don't have class to give you time to finish this. So you're going to, there's a discussion thread that you guys can hopefully see. Um, and I'm not sure if you all have posted in it or not yet, because I haven't been in Canvas since Wednesday. Um, but you'll reply directly to three people. I say that I don't want anyone to have more than three responses. That might not work out um, just because more people, like some people might do peer review, but they didn't post their assignment. Um, mostly, I just don't want one response to have like 10 peer reviews and one have zero. Like if all of them have three and you still have to do of peer response, it's okay to do the fourth, but just don't leave someone with no feedback because that's not fair. Does that make sense? I'm just not sure how it's going to work out. So, um, so there's three steps that I'm going to be grading you all on. So one is praise. We're going to, this whole class, we're going to break this down, but the requirement is provide genuine and specific praise to your classmate saying, I like this is not enough, tell them why. Questions and suggestions. So at least two questions are required. Suggestions are optional, but the questions are mandatory. Um, 
So these questions could be, hey, this isn't clear, can you explain this more? Or I want to know more about this specific part of, I want to know more about the community's history. Um, or it could be like a question like, this is a really interesting project. What I would be curious about this community is this, like give your classmate an idea of um, something they could research or write about. Again, you all don't have to take any um, questions. You don't have to do anything your peers say. You don't have to do anything I say, um, but just to help each other, give each other more ideas. Um, suggestions, similarly, if you notice your classmate didn't do something they were supposed to do for the assignment, you can point that out. Like, hey, you're missing um, a scholarly source. Or I looked at your scholarly source and it's a blog. Like, you could give like suggestions that way. Or I feel like this part, you should have spent more time on this. Um, unpack this a little more. But a suggestion could also be, hey, this project is really, um, Interesting. I think a cool multimedia project would be a podcast interviewing um, people that used to be a part of this community or something. Like if you, if it sparks an idea for you, be generous and share that with your classmate. Third, um, find tensions. So did your classmate discover contradictions on the internet within the information about their selected community? Are they so? You, if you, there are contradictions, are these sources in stasis or arguing past each other? This is not page 17, it's page 19. Um, so we'll kind of talk about stasis more today. And then I want you all to search the same community on the same social media platform your classmate chose. Do you see the same videos, images, posts, or different? Does the information change through your algorithm? So I just want us to think about um, how people receive information and how the content curation of social media affects the information we receive um, about different communities and about each other. Because we are a lot of, I told you all, you all said you don't do it, but I heard that sometimes when like people hear of something, they just search it straight on TikTok instead of like Google, like find out what happened. So. There are a lot of people that use social media solely as their source of news. So I just want us to think about that. Do you all have, we're gonna get into this more, but do you all have questions coming up right away on this assignment? Great. So this is just a little mini writing activity for you all. Um, if you have something to write with, can jot down your answers to these three questions. If not, you can just think about it. I'm gonna give you all five minutes. Um, and if other ideas come up about your preferences that aren't these specific questions, you can write those down as well. I'm going to, can I pause this? Um, sorry, if you're online, you have to wait five minutes.
All right, one more minute. All right, great. So the reason I wanted you all to think about this um, is just to understand what you're bringing to the table. Um, so you can use this information, you all get to choose which of your peers you're going to review. Um, and when we're to praise something it's probably going to be easier to look for something that fits within our likes right so but you also might have to review something that doesn't fit within your likes um, and in that case I think it's still important to have in mind what your preferences are and understand that going in so for example if you answered the first question and said I like facts and data but you're reviewing a classmate who's writing about a community they're a member of and they're really saying, well, this source says this, but my personal experience tells me this. If you're a facts and data person, that might not be convincing to you. But if you like, if you're more discerning and you like, um, or you like to like be more discerning and kind of hear a story and think about what it means, that might be really effective for you. Um, we still want to develop the ability to praise and admire something that might not be for us. Um, and that starts by understanding what we like and what we don't like. Does that make sense to everybody? So that's just why I want us to think about that. So you can have these things in front of you when you go to do a peer review. If you start early enough, you can select which classmates you're going to review based on these and if they don't fit you can understand well i might not like this but i like facts and data but what does a story do for a reader um, it's just going to be a little more of a mental exercise so for the assignment um you guys have to give specific for praise if you just write i like the opening I like your idea. I like this. You're not going to get full credit. Um, he, these are just some examples. And this will be more when we get into like longer papers. Since this assignment's kind of short, you might not know the voice or tone. There might not be much to say about the sentence arrangement. But just to give you all some ideas of like things you could specifically praise. Um, so voice or tone, does anybody want to take a stab at what that means in writing? Yeah. Uh, I guess just kind of a way to present the information. Yeah. So the tone that you're uh, trying to uh, portray in your piece. Yeah. Yeah, so when we think about the way like Orwell wrote his essay versus the textbook. Does anybody want to try to um, say how those are different? Tone and voice wise? Yeah, Olivia. I feel like Orwell was more opinionated and like persuasive and the textbook was just straightforward. Does that make sense to me? Orwell, Orwell was straightforward in his opinion, but the textbook was just like, these are the facts. So. Yeah, totally. I agree. Anyone else have ideas on that? Great, thank you all. So that's something that you could compliment. Um, sentence arrangement, 
So you can comment on the rhythm, um, the kind of if they alternate a long sentence with a short sentence. Um, if some people like, I just read an essay last week that he opened his first paragraph was like all one sentence and he was like showing off. It was like acrobatic. Um, so that's something you could compliment. Again, that would be like a longer essay. Um, word choice. So if you admire a specific word they use to describe something, point it out, say why. Um, if you think, even if maybe they use a word that you hadn't heard of before and you had to look it up and you're like, wow, that describes exactly what you're trying to say. Great job. Um, momentum. So I define good momentum as you're getting more and more invested as you read. If you start out really into something with the introduction, but it loses steam, they could have done better with momentum. If it's really boring until the very end, you could have done better with momentum. Um, so if you're noticing the pacing is really nice, you're building, they're building your interest in the topic, you could compliment their momentum. Um, does anyone know what an illusion is? Yeah. Like a or something? Yep, totally. Yeah, so if they do a good job, um, referring to something we learned in class, referring to like a text or a piece of literature you're familiar with, you could compliment that and say, hey, it really worked for me the way you referred to the Orwell essay to drive your point home. That made me understand it better. Um, repetition. So in, when we read the Savini piece, she said to notice words that are repeated. So if someone is repeating a word or a concept that's their main point um, and really driving that home. That's an excellent use of repetition. That's how we want repetition to you work. You could compliment that. If they're repeating something over and over again that you don't really feel like is relevant to the paper, that could be a suggestion like, hey, I don't think you needed to bring this up over and over again. It doesn't seem, is it that important to your piece that it needs to be mentioned more than once? Any questions on, we're gonna do like a practice round today too. But any questions on providing specific praise? Again, you might not be able to comment on these things on this assignment, it's okay. But keep them in mind for the next round when we look at each other's papers. Um, so then you'll have to ask two questions. Again, these could be questions asking for advice or it could be like offering advice can you provide more history about the community here? I'm not sure what defines this community. You could be joining in conversation with the writer. Like, I think it's interesting this community doesn't eat pork. Why do you think different communities have different rules around what animals we can and can't eat? So kind of encouraging the writer to think more in a specific direction. And this is just being generous, just sharing, just giving ideas. They don't have to go write about that, but maybe they're like, oh, that is really interesting. Maybe that'll be something I focus on. Questions about questions? Okay, great. Step four, find tensions. So is there contradictory information your classmate found on the internet? If they have two sources and they're contradicting, we want to find are they in stasis or are they arguing past each other? Does someone want to explain the difference between being in stasis or arguing past each other? Yeah. <clears throat> Isn't in stasis mean that like you guys are arguing like the same fact, if that makes sense? But arguing past each other is like you're arguing two different things, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean like of course you're gonna be on two opposite sides of the argument. Yes, no, that's a wonderful explanation of it. You're, you have it exactly right. Um, we can do like an example of that, just to make sure we understand. So the type of questions that you guys are gonna need to identify are on page 19. Claim of fact, is he or she arguing whether something exists or whether it happened? Claim of definition, 
arguing what something should be called or how it should be classified. Claim of quality, arguing whether something is good or bad, just or unjust, greater or lesser. Author making a claim of cause or effect. Is he, she arguing about the cause that led to something? Is he, she arguing about the effects that something will have? Is the author making a claim of proposal? Is he, she arguing the best course of action in a certain situation? So um, let's try to break this down with an example just to make sure you guys can kind of see, because this happens all the time, right? Can you all think of any like major issue that people fight about on the internet and we can kind of talk about it? Okay, I'll use, I use this example with my last class. Um, abortion, for example, like, you think you have people that are pro-choice and people that are pro-life, but it's really a little more nuanced than that, right? Um, so someone can be arguing, be pro-choice and say, women have the right to choose what they do with their bodies. And then someone who's pro-life could be saying, a baby has a baby is a baby at conception. They have rights starting at conception. Are they in stasis or arguing past each other? Stasis. Arguing past each you say stasis and you say arguing past each other. Do you want to explain how you think they're in stasis? I'm saying it's stasis because you're arguing both on the subject of what should be done about abortion. Okay. Rather than it, rather than being just one or the other, it's more about whether abortion should be legalized, should be considered a right, or should be left to the state. Okay. And do you want to argue? I'm sorry, I'm putting you all on the spot a bit, but um, why you think it's arguing past each other? Because they're not arguing the same question. Like if the question or if the statement is women have the right to choose what they do with their body, the other side of the argument would be no, they don't. Or is a baby a baby at conception or not? That would be in stasis. But since they're arguing about the same subject but different questions, it wouldn't. Yeah. Oh, I agree with it's arguing past each other. I would say determining when life begins is a claim of definition. Um, and deciding who gets to choose whether they have an abortion or not is a claim of proposal. So arguing the best course of action in a certain situation. So they are both around the same topic. They are answering this overall big question of whether people should be able to get legal abortions or not, but they're coming at it in different directions. Does that make sense to you all? Um, you have it, you know, like global warming, for example, you might start with a claim of fact. Do both people arguing about global warming, like if one person doesn't even think global warming exists, you can't move past that argument into what we should do about it until you agree that it exists. And then you can get into, is it a corporate responsibility? Is it an individual responsibility? Um, but to actually be able to have arguments, have debates, you have to be in agreement first, going back and forth on the same question. So do you all have any questions or any other ideas on that? Right. And again, you can always have different ideas and um, you can, whether you think people are in stasis or arguing past each other, um, just being able to back that up and explain why. Great, so, finish up here. Um, this is an example writing that I put together. Um, so this isn't a real student writing, it's not anyone in this class or any class. Um, so we're gonna take like five, six minutes to read over this and write two or three sentences 
either praising it, offering, asking a question or a suggestion, um, or looking for tension within it. So we'll stop it. Let's stop at 10.42. We'll do seven minutes to take your time and then we'll share and go home.
All right, one more minute. All right, so let's get three volunteers, people that haven't spoke yet today since the participation class, and then we can go home. Thank you. Um, I like how the tone is kind of showing how stressed out the writer is, and like all the questions in the middle just like make the writer sound stressed out. <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of the sentence arrangement too, right? Great. Oh wow, thank you. We'll go Logan first. I kind of like the beginning, how like the writer like used like a little, kind of like we, like panic we pass to get to college, like like panic again. It like kind of like grabbed like your attention, like it grabbed my attention. Yeah. And, like like if she had just started off and been like I kind of said it like you know, like Monday away and then like less interesting. Like, yeah. So repetition and rhythm and. Yeah. Kind of grabbed your attention. Momentum too grabbed your attention. Carlos. Uh, really grabbed my attention was like he, he like he put out an example. He like compared the two scenarios like to, to the professor with trash. So that's what really caught my eye. Yeah, and it, did it make it like more interesting or easier to understand or yeah, yeah. easier to understand? Great. So that great examples of. Um, praise that would get you all full credit on this assignment. Just notice when you compliment something, I encourage you to say like kind of how I pushed Carlos, like what effect did that have on you as a reader? Just include that part. Um, and I'm gonna put up just this like reminder. So you have the short writing due today by midnight as well. Um, but you guys are good to go. If you, if you have questions, I'll be here. But no class next week. We'll be, if you can't get an individual conference time that works for you, email me. We'll figure it out because those are required. And individual conferences will be at your office if they're in person. If they're in person, we can do it in my office or on the mezzanine in POP. Um, it's like a little. So you can grab a coffee and my office is shared so it's just depends like if it's okay. empty or not but either way in pot so will you like send an email before yeah you if you guys want to meet in person i'll um email if you're in zoom i'll send you a zoom appointment if we meet in person we can meet in my office or in the mezzanine PT. Okay, I think I did in person, I'm pretty sure. Perfect, yeah, we'll see. Either way, my office mates are all in the English department. Hi, I had a question. Yeah. So, I'm not gonna lie, I'm still having a little bit of trouble understanding like the community aspect. Okay. Does that make sense? Because like when I think about one, like when I start writing my benchmark, it, I feel like it's too broad. Okay. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, that makes sense. And I think even if you're starting broad, like you might, as you go through the research portion, either get more specific on the community or even the old, the questions that come up. Right. You might be working towards a more specific direction that's like um, going to be able, will be able to like right. write a paper on and not have it be a huge project okay because I was thinking about that and I had that in mind but I'm like is it okay if my like first benchmark I guess yeah my first benchmark is more broad because I know the kind of like question I want to ask as my specific you know yeah right now but I don't think 
I have enough research done to do that for the benchmark. Yeah, well, I think this, like, it's totally fine if it's broad because you'll get some feedback from your peers and then we'll meet and talk about it even more before the first major assignment. Okay. So we can, it's hard for me to answer so much when I don't know specific, but that's the point okay. of the conferences too, okay. to kind of see what you're thinking, get some feedback from your peers, then talk with me and kind of, I'll not tell you what to do, but be yeah. like, here's a challenge I could see happening, or here's an idea. Okay, cool. So just, you're not gonna be like, you have to do exactly this, or this is right. wrong on right. this. Okay, so. that helped. Thank okay, you, I yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> it's all process. <laughs> have a good one. Hey. Mm. So, uh, I was gonna switch from my project and I was gonna do. I was gonna switch it to, I don't know if you know what these are, but uh, bootleggers. Um, bootleggers. Yeah, bootleggers. Yeah, like from, from the, uh, like 19, from Prohibition, yeah. yeah. I was gonna do those because I feel like it's one of those periods of time that no one ever recovers on. Yeah. This one was just community set. I feel like a lot of people nowadays, especially people in my age, don't really even know about it. I yeah, so no, that's cool. super interesting. I love that. And so I think, I oh, God. I want to see if that was, that was part of the organization that wasn't able to do that. No, sounds great. And I think <laughs> no, being in Kentucky, you can find, you you'll be able to find some good archives and artifacts. <laughs> I know for example, I went to um, 